Hello learners, welcome to environmental science in your secondary course of NIOS. I am sure by now you are familiar with the origin of earth, principle of ecology, human impact on environment and contemporary issues related to environmental degradation. Now we will talk about conservation of our environment. So natural resources are those resources that occur within the environment in their original and natural forms undisturbed by humanity. The mother earth is abundant with natural resources that develop on this planet using its surrounding in environment. These natural resources are derived from the environment while few of them are used for our survival like water, air, rest of them like coal, gas, oil are used for satisfying our daily needs. From forest to mountain to minerals to coastal shores and wetlands, each of these natural resources has its own importance. Natural resources, air, water from rainfall and in lakes, my rivers and wells, soil, land, forest, biodiversity, etc. But increasing population and economic activity resulted in excessive material consumption is putting heavy burden on natural resource base and it is causing severe damage to the environment. It is therefore extremely important to prevent further degradation of natural resources and use them in a wise and judicious manner, ensure their sustainable utilization. Natural resources conservation involves they are not wasted, depleted or degraded and are available to both present and future generation. This is lesson 16, conservation of natural resources of module 5 of this course. I am Neelam Gupta, course coordinator of environmental science. Welcome you in this program. The objective of this program is to explain the term resource and classify is giving example. Explain the primary energy sources and their consumption. List various fossil fuels and their occurrence. List and describe various renewable resources list and classify various type of mineral resources, classify min mineral, give examples and they are used in Indian context, suggest ways to reduce their depletion. Now come to the classification of natural resources. Natural resources are two types, renewable and non-renewable. Renewable can be divided into unconditionally renewable example, sun, and conditionally renewable resources include acycling, slow sources, example, biogeochemical cycles, and simple biotech resources, examples, reproduction and growth of plants and animals and complex biotech resources includes interaction of biotic and abiotic, example ecosystem, land and soil. Non-renewable resources includes minerals and fossil fuels. Minerals includes metallic and non-metallic and fossil fuels include coal, oil, gas, peat and ignite. We will discuss in detail later in this program. Now come to the primary energy uh, resources and their consumption. Fossil fuel includes all forms of stored solar energy including coal, ignite, peat, crude oil and natural gas. These are considered primary sources of energy. These energy resources are renewable and exhaustible though coal, oil and natural gas are biotic in origin as they were produced from plants and plankton that lived millions of years ago. Now consumption of oil, the global consumption of oil has grown rapidly although the world is not yet running out of oil but like all other non-renewable resources, oil supplies are found in to decline eventually. It is believed that at the present rate of consumption oil will reach its total depletion sometime during this century. Now we will have three options, look for more oil, second use or waste less oil or use third one is use something else. Now fossil fuels and their occurrence, first uh, coal, oil and natural gas are three major fossil fuels that are conventional sources of energy. First we will take coal. Coal is the world's most abundant energy resource that is burnt most to produce electricity and steel. Coal is a solid fossil fuel and wa that was formed in several stages as shown in figure as the buried remains of land plants that live 300 to 400 million years ago. In Indian India, about one third of the country's coal reserves are attributed in Jharkhand coal fields like Jaria, Bokaro, Giridi, Dalton Ganj, etc. Mining and burning of coal has severe environmental impact on air, water and land and accounts for more than one third of the world's annual carbon dioxide emission. Coal formation takes place over a period of thousands of thousands of years. Per, per firstly, par, uh, partially thicket plant matter in swamp and bogs known as peat under immense heat and pressure. This peat turns into lignite which is brown color coal. It is low cost and low sulfur content. Due course of time under immense heat and pressure applied 
bituminous coal or soft coal is formed. This coal is generally used as fuel, again under immense heat and pressure applied, anthracite or hard coal is formed. It is desirable fuel with low sulfur content. This is overall procedure for coal formation. Now second is petroleum. Petroleum is a thick liquid containing a complex mixture of hydrocarbon with sulfur, nitrogen, and oxygen. In India, commercial oil production is being carried out in four regions. First, Assembly, second, Gujarat region, third, Mumbai High offshore region, and fourth, east coast of in Krishna, Kaveri, and Godavari basins. Mumbai High is the top petroleum producing region in India. Recently, petroleum has been found in Jaisalmer district of Rajasthan. Deposit of crude oil and natural gas are trapped together within the earth crust and under the sea floor. The crude oil is dispersed in pores and cracks in underground rock formations like water saturating a sponge. The oil drawn out of the rock pores and into the bottom of the well and from where it is pumped to the surface. Natural gas like coal oil was formed from fossil fuels. The conditions needed for oil formation are same as those for natural gas. Natural gas is emerging an important source of commercial energy. It is found in association of petroleum. India has a huge recoverable reserve of natural gas. Natural gas contains methane and some smaller amount of propane and butane. When a natural gas field is tapped, propane and butane gases are liquefied and removed as LPG. The rest of the gas is dried to remove water vapor, cleansed of poisonous hydrogen sulfide and pumped into pressurized pipelines for distribution. At a very low temperature, natural gas can be converted into liquefied natural gas that is LNG. But pie chart of natural gas shows 43% natural gas used by industry, 22% by industrial purposes, 18% is used for electric utility and 14% as commercial purposes. Now come to the mineral resources and their classification and their uses. India has extensive and rich deposits of industrially important minerals. Minerals like water and land are invaluable treasure of the earth. Minerals play a significant role in industrialization and economic development of a country. Like oil and petroleum, minerals are non-renewable resources, hence they must be used carefully and judiciously so that they are conserved for future. Come to the classification of minerals. Minerals are broadly divided into two groups, metallic and non-metallic. Metallic minerals are further subdivided into ferro and ferrous and non-ferrous metals. Now classification of minerals. Ferrous metallic minerals include iron, manganese, chromium. Non-ferrous metallic minerals are gold, silver, tin, copper, zinc, etc. Non-metallic minerals include limestone, dolomite, mica, gypsum, etc. We will discuss all minerals in detail. First, iron ore, that is ferrous metallic minerals. They constitute most important mineral group after fuel minerals. They include manganese, chromite, pyrite, iron, etc. These minerals contain iron in substantial quantity. These minerals provide a strong base for the development of metallurgical industries, particularly iron, steel, and alloy. Most iron ores found in the country are of three types, hematite, magnetite, and limonite. Hematite is a red color, red in color called red ore and has 68% iron. Magnetite is dark brown in color called black ore, has 60% iron. Limonite is yellow in color and has 35% iron. India has large reserve of hematite and magnetite ores. Inferior quality limonite is rarely used. India has 20% of the world's total reserve of iron ore. Almost 96% of the total iron reserve in the, of the country are in Orissa, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Karnataka, and Goa. Second one is manganese ore. India ranks third in the production of manganese ore in the world. One fourth of the total production of India is exported. Manganese is an important ingredient in the manufacture of iron and steel and ferromanganese alloy. It is also used in the manufacture of dry batteries in photography, leather and match industries. About 85% of total manganese consumption in India is used by metallurgical industries. Important areas of production are Urissa, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka. Next is chromite. Chromite is used in metallurgical, refractory and chemical industries. Orissa ha alone has 98% of recoverable reserves. Now come to the non-ferrous metallic minerals. 
These minerals, which do not contain iron, they include gold, silver, copper, tin, zinc, and lead. These metals are very important in our daily life. India is deficient in all these minerals. First come to bauxite. Bauxite is a non-ferrous metallic mineral. It is the ore from which aluminium metal is produced. India has a rich reserve of bauxite. Aluminium extracted from the ore is used to making aeroplanes, electric appliances and goods, household fittings, utensils, etc. It is also used in the manufacture of white color cement and certain chemicals. Major reserves of bauxite occur in Jharkhand, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Gujarat, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Goa and Uttar Pradesh. Next is copper. Copper is a good conductor of electricity. It is extensively used in the manufacture of electrical cables, wires and electrical goods. Major copper ore deposits are found in Singhbhum of Jharkhand, Balaghat of Madhya Pradesh and Junjunu and Alwar of Rajasthan. Next is zinc and lead. Zinc and lead have very high industrial significance. Zinc is mainly used in dye industry. It is also used in dye, casting, dry batteries, textile, etc. Similarly, lead is used in electrical cables, batteries, glass, ammunition, printing, rubber, industry, etc. Lead and zinc reserves occur in Rajasthan, Gujarat, Maharashtra, West Bengal, Orissa, Madhya Pradesh, and Uttar Pradesh. Next is gold. Gold is a precious metal and, and is highly valued by people all over the world. It is one of the rare minerals. There are three important gold fields in the country, namely Kolar gold field and Hatti gold field both in Karnataka and Ramgiri gold field in Andhra Pradesh. Gold is obtained from sand deposit of rivers, is known as placer deposit. A small quantity of gold is produced from placer deposit in Jharkhand. This is the table which shows metallic minerals and their uses as you seen in the figure. Iron has properties like malleable, can be molded, rust from a form alloy and is used for construction, ship, road, vehicle, etc. Aluminium is used for packaging, vehicles, construction, window frame and has property like malleable, good conductor of heat and electricity, corrosion resistance, etc. Copper is used for electric cables, water pipes, etc. And malleable and very good electric conductor is a property. Chromium is used for making stainless steel and is property for our form alloy makes steel harder and corrosion resistance. Next is non-metallic minerals. India has deposits of several non-metallic minerals. These minerals are used as raw minerals, a flux minerals and as refractory minerals. Only a few of the non-metallic minerals are significant in the mining economy. Limestone, phosphorite, kaolin, gypsum and magnesite are significant non-metallic minerals. First is limestone. Limestone is a key raw material for construction, chemical and metallurgical industries. Almost 76% of country's total consumption is used in cement industry. A large amount is used in iron and steel industry. Limestone is also used by sugar, paper, fertilizer and ferromagnese industries. Large deposits of limestone are available in our country. Next is dolomite. Is a Type of limestone, deposit of dolomite are present in almost all part of the country. Third is mica. mica. India is the leading producer of sheet mica. Bihar and Jharkhand produce the high quality ruby mica. Mica mining was mainly done for export and USA being the principal importing country. It was one of the indispensable min mineral used in electrical and electronic industries till recently. However, its synthetic substitute has reduced its export as well as production considerably. Next is phosphate minerals. These are mainly used for manufacturing of phosphate fertilizer. Rajasthan is the leading producer followed by Uttaranchal, Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. This uh, figure shows non-metallic minerals and their uses. Limestone is used in building blocks crushed for road surface, railway track, hard, easily cut and crushed resistant to wear Baked lime hardened which mixed with water is its properties. Next is gypsum is used for building blocks, kitchen worktops, floor tiles, crushed for road surface, shipping. Sand is used for builder imbota glasses and fine grilled filler, transparent in thin sheet are the properties of sand. Gravel used as concrete and coarse grain filler. Now come to the ways to conserve the non-renewable resources. 
First is prohibiting wastage of resources using public transport in place of individual vehicles, help to conserve valuable petrol, use of carpool system, switching of fan lights and cooler when not in use, using cooking gas economically, use of pressure cooker, in using tube lights, PFL and bulb in place of electric bulb are some ways to conserving non-renewable resources. Second is use of substitute. Energy like solar energy, wind energy, tidal energy can be used on a large scale to substitute the fossil fuel. Use of solar cooker and biogas for cooking must be encouraged. Plastics are now used to make product in place of steel. Recycling resources, all types of metal waste, glass and paper and plastic can be recycled and used again. All the junk is used again to make paper, plastic and metal articles. Recycling plastic helps to conserve fuel, repair and use. In India, we do not discard any object or appliance that does not work. We get it repaired and we use it. This helps to conserve resources as it discourages production and wastage to check and reduce depletion of minerals. Substitution of more abundant minerals like plastic and glass for a scarce mineral as an important way to check depletion. Glass fiber have replaced copper wiring in telephone cable. Synthetic substitute of mica has reduced its export as well as production. One way to improve mining technology is to use microorganisms to extract metals from its ore known as biomining, which may be an economical and environmentally preferable way to mine metals. Presently, 30% of copper produced worldwide comes from such biomining. The science of nanotechnology have immense potential of using atoms in producing or manufacturing everything from machine medicines to solar cells to automobile bodies. Thus, the job of many metals can be taken over by new materials produced by nanotechnology. When a resource became scarce, its price rises. This can increase exploration of new deposits, stimulate development of better mining technology and make it profitable to mine lower grade ores. Now come to the renewable resources. These resources are those we can, can be formed or regenerated by natural processes. Air, water, soil, animals, vegetation are renewable primary resources because they recycle, uh, they naturally recycle and reproduce themselves. Renewable resources can be perpetual, which last forever on human life time scale and conditional renewable resources which must produ reproduce and regenerate in order to last forever. First is unconditionally renewable resources. Solar, wind, and tidal energy are virtually inexhaustible resources on human time scale. Solar energy in the form of heat and light are delivered to Earth every day. We use it or not. Solar energy can be used in a regulated manner for space and water, heating it or it can convert it into electricity by producing steam. Next, solar energy harnessed through solar panel. Solar voltage cells are used in solar TVs and solar thermal energy is used to cook food in solar cookers. Next is wind, the greater heating of earth by sun at the equator than at the pole and the rotation of the earth set up flows of air called wind. Thus, wind is an indirect form of solar energy and can be kept by wind turbine to generate electricity. Coastal areas of India are particularly suitable for generating electricity from wind energy. It's wind mill that convert energy of wind into electrical energy by means of rotation of blades. Next is tidal energy. Tidal energy can be generated from high tidal waves in India. Areas identified for generating tidal energy are located in Gulf of Kutch and Kombe in Gujarat. Tidal stream generator make use of kinetic energy of moving water to rotate turbine in a small similar way to wind turbine to form electrical energy. Now conditional renewable sources is land and soil. Land is a precious source which human have used for agriculture mining. Human exploitation of land for various activities like agriculture, industry, housing, entertainment ultimately result in the degradation of land and degraded land has reduced capacity to sustain healthy crop growth of crop and plants. Soil formation is a natural process, so soil is a renewable resource, but formation of an inch of soil is layer is generally taken, takes 200 to 1000 years and soil erosion occurs much faster as compared to the rate of soil formation. So it became non renewable source as. Methods of conserving land and resources and soil conservation according to Natural Resource Management Division, Department of Agriculture and Cooperation, Ministry of Agriculture, Government of India, we can conserve our land resources and soil preservation by adopting the few measures. Contour plowing, 
by terracing method under the afforestation and deforestation pro uh, programs, we can prevent soil erosion. Strict actions are taken to check reckless felling of trees and overgrazing. Shelter beds are planted on the margin of desert areas to check out the Bureau of Wind, construction of jam, dam and gully trail, inculcate the water harvesting. Prevention of soil, soil erosion can be prevented by the following method that is afforestation, terrace or step farming and building embankment on river bank prevent soil erosion by the river. Details are given in lesson 17. Next is water, water is an invaluable, invaluable resource. We generally depend on fresh water resources for our survival which is finite in quality. We use fresh water for drinking, irrigating, waste disposal, etc. Ability of water is a powerful indicator of economic prosperity and ecological sustainability. Fast depletion of fresh water resources must be checked and availability of water may increase by. Prevention of water wastes can be increasing water use efficiency, recycling water, capturing and store flood runoff, harvesting rainwater, desalinating seawater. Details are given in lesson 18. Next is biodiversity is a valuable resource. Plant animals are able to reproduce and maintain their healthy population. Biodiversity is a great use of humans as they derive many direct and indirect benefit from the living world. It is source of food crops, livestock, forestry and fisheries. You have already learned about biodiversity in lesson 15. Biodiversity is the great use of modern agriculture in ways, source of new crops, source of material for breeding and improved variety as a source of biodegradable pesticides. Increasing growth of population adversely affects biodiversity, over exploitation of ecosystem, ecosystem, habitat destruction and pollution are major cause of biodiversity loss. The over exploitation of living resources must be checked and stopped to conserve the maintain healthy biodiversity for the overall benefits of present and future generation. Prevention of forest and wildlife. We must preserve our forest and wild animals and this can be done in the following ways. We must control the cutting of trees and plant more trees. We must prevent forest fire. Converting forest into national park and bird sanctuaries. The government has now started protecting forest by converting them into national parks and wildlife and bird sanctuaries. Cutting of trees or killing of birds and animals is not allowed here and is punishable by the law. Before we wrap up, we would like to recap the main points that is what you have learnt. Resources, anything used or can be made useful to human, humans to meet their needs. Natural resources are earth's natural material and process that sustain life on earth. Petroleum, natural gas, coal are major non-renewable fossil fuels. Non-new energy resources must be found out so that the fossil fuels can be conserved for future. Minerals are important non-renewable resources and are extremely important for our industrial and economic growth. Iron, manganese and chromite are ferrous metallic materials. India has rich iron resources in many states. Gold, silver, aluminium, copper, tin, lead are non-ferrous metallic, metallic minerals. India has rich deposits of several non-metallic minerals like limestone, dolomite, mica, etc. Ocean beds or floors are rich in minerals, resource, gold, silver, copper, zinc are present in ocean floor but their accession is very costly. Depletion of metals and minerals can be checked by the following methods or recycling the existing supply, rest less, use less, find a substitute, extract bio mining. Renewable resources are those that can be formed or regenerated by natural processes, air, water, soil, vegetation and animals, renewable primary resources because they naturally recycle and reproduce themselves. Biodiversity is valuable renewable resource. Plant and animals are able to reproduce and maintain their healthy population. The over exploitation of living resources must be checked and stopped to conserve and maintain healthy biodiversity for the overall benefit of present and future generations. So dear learners, this is all about the lesson 16, conservation of other natural resources. We would come again to meet you with a new program of environmental science. Thank you.